what it is, what's up, college football in the car cut, in the cut, back with another, <laughs> back with another video, when do I want to take this, kind of like the way Bo Nitz just took the Heisman out of, that was clean, that was pretty clean, uh, out of um, Michael Penis's hands, I, now you see the title, um, you know what this is, I'll turn, I'll turn the engine off, let me turn the engine off. I'm on my work break right now. And I see that um, Nets is now plus 110, I believe. Uh, I think it was on FanDuel to get the Heisman. And uh, second place, I think it's Daniels at plus 320, I think. I think it was Daniels. might have been Penis. But um, at this point, it's pretty much just went out and Nets gets it. Um, in, in going, you know, winning out, he has to play Washington, who I think has already clinched the spot in the, the conference championship. Um... But that's it. It's just beat penis. I know it's penis, but I like. I was gonna say something crazy, but I don't want to say that. Uh, <laughs> I think, realistically speaking, Daniels is all but eliminated. Three losses, uh, no show in the eleventh fourth quarter because of that dirty ass bastard uh, Dallas Turner. Um, MHJ, I, I don't see it at this point. Um, I. I don't know what he had to do. I guess 400 yards against Michigan and maybe like 300 in the, the conference championship. I, I don't know what else even gets him in real contention. It's just not – unless you have a year like 2020, uh, 2015, basically all the times that Alabama's won a Heisman, where everybody else is just not really doing that well, um, it just – it won't happen. 2015 probably should have been Deshaun Watson or McCaffrey. But Alabama had the number two team, number one, I think. And the narratives, 2020, the whole fucking season sucked for everybody, except like Alabama, Ohio State, and Clemson. Um, it's just not a type of year. Uh, the quarterbacks are out and about. This is one of the – the fucking resolution on this shit's incredible, by the way. If you see my old videos, I might have to throw one up there, as I'm, you know, in the, the post-editing. This video camera is incredible in comparison. It's not 4K, but you can even see like, my fucked up hairline here, dude. It's crazy. Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, it's, we're just at a point where there's too much talent in the quarterback position. And if there's too much talent in the quarterback position, no other position is winning it. Um, I, I would honestly say MHJ isn't, like, he doesn't really have a case. Like, I know some people are like, he's the best player in football. That may be, but he doesn't have a case. And I don't know if he's the best player. Like, I still think Caleb, for whatever people want to say about, you know, the losses, uh, the really shitty performance against Notre Dame, he had some other couple of mediocre performances. That team is fucking terrible. Like, like, I don't mean, like, it's, like, legitimately, like, untalented. It's just that chemistry, play calling, uh, philosophy, morale, like, they fucking suck in every category outside of what Caleb brings to the table. I think they have talent receivers, but Mario Williams isn't like he, who's who's Jordan Addison. He's not Jordan Addison. Um, Zachariah Branch had a spark when he started, but you know he's not. You know, yeah. I think Lloyd's a talented running back. I think Die are talented running backs, but like ph philosophically speaking, like they really don't like get the carries and be at the contributors they could be. I think Lloyd is hurt now. Um, I think I might have to double check on that. But um, the offensive line is shitty as hell. It's horrendous. Especially in pass blocking, um, it's it really like without Caleb, dude, that team. If you replace Caleb with a league average quarterback, the team may not have a win this season, bro. And I mean, even look down at San Jose State. San Jose State put up twenty sits on them dudes. Shavon Cordero looked like fucking a Taylor Martinez out there, dude. They they, can, they lose that game with an average quarterback, man. It's just it's just a fact. Um, so he doesn't have the MVP case to me. He doesn't have the really the best player. MVP would be Jaden Daniels, probably. Well, no. I don't think it'd be him either. Because Jaden Daniels has, like, two top 20-ish receivers. Maybe even higher than that at receiver. Um, his running backs have been better than any LSU quarterback has had in quite a while. Um, offensive line is very stout. I don't know. The MVP case might be Caleb, but he's not even, like, in contention. So it's like, I don't know. Uh, but best player, I would say, is probably, excuse me, Subway be hitting, dude. Uh, best player.
player is probably Daniels. Like, just best overall dude out there. I mean, Manziel... I'm thinking, like, the case of, like, dudes who, like, won without really being in, in natty contention. RG3, Manziel, Lamar. Lamar was... I think he had two losses that season. I think. I know he had the Clemson one, but I think he had another one somewhere along the way. I would say Daniels is close to that ilk off the top of my head. I mean, I'm just, like, kind of envisioning... You know, 600 plus yard game, uh, you know, five, four or five TD games. Uh, the defense is really bad against good teams. I, I don't, I don't know. I'd say he probably has like the best player case. Cause I'm thinking about Washington. Pennis has like three of the top 15 to 20 receivers, maybe even four. I'm trying to think of a top, uh, uh, Odunze, um, Jalen McMillan. And there's one I'm forgetting. But there might be a fourth that I'm also forgetting. God, I forgot. The, I, the third one's the one I need to be remembering, but I forgot his name. Um, Dylan Johnson is good when playing a, like a bad run front. Which, I mean, not every running back is good against a bad run front. Some are mediocre, but he really did his thing against, uh, I think it was Arizona. Arizona? It's not, I don't think it was State because they won Sterling 7-14. Or 14 or 7. I think it was Arizona. Um, might have been the USC. I don't know. Actually, I think that's about it. Is there anybody else I'm missing? Yeah, I think I saw like Sitz and Oz with Carson Beck. I mean, that's not, you can't make a case for that. Carson Beck was like mediocre as hell for like three fourths of the, or it's about two, two and a half course against Auburn. Um, and that was like his, was that his only defensive test? He was shitty against South Carolina for the first half too. What other tests did he really have? I don't. I'm talking my head. I don't. I don't really know. I could def, as terms of defense, I think Auburn might be the only good defense he's played. Kentucky. And this is a down Kentucky year. Missouri. Missouri has a, has a really solid defense. They probably could have won that game if a couple balls bounced in. Fucking Missouri. What's that he does against Tennessee? Uh, Michigan. JJ McCarthy. Nah. To me, it's either it's, and this is what I've been saying from the jump. It's the Pac 12 conference champion winner, championship game winner. Whoever is the better in that game is going to win the Heisman. I've been saying that for like, I think since, at least since the first time they matched up, if not earlier than that. They just clearly were like the two like statistical deities of this season for me, for my eye. Um, I, obviously, Jaden Davis can continue putting up numbers. You know, Caleb Williams can maybe return to form. But from that point on, it just, like, those are the two dudes that, like, kind of, like, this is Heisman. And, I mean, I felt like it should be a Pac-12 representative because that was, to me, the best conference. You know, it's trailed down a bit since Colorado fell off. Uh, Washington State hasn't won a game since, like, I think October, early October, like, late September. Um... But still, I mean, Oregon State is legit. Washington, and when I say legit, I mean, like, they're, like, real. Like, if they didn't play in a a beast conference that eats each other alive, I think they'd be all right. Um, Washington, Oregon, UCLA is really good. They just had, like, anything decent at the court position. If you just gave them DTR again, that's probably a top 15 team bare minimum. Hell, I think it was top 15 at one point the season before uh, the offense would just fell apart. But um, R.P. Chip Kelly, man. Uh, but yeah, DTR. Uh, you get you put him back on the team. They're like top fifteen, I think, bare minimum. <sighs> USC, you know, just give them defense. They're still one of the best teams, I think. It's such a good conference, man. It really is. I I know some people that be like, what the fuck, SEC? The fucking Alabama, Georgia, SEC, man. I've been watching SEC the whole season, dude. I'm a I'm an Auburn fan, dude. It, it, it's not the SEC. I'd I'd probably argue the Big Ten. Probably argue the SEC, honestly. Big Ten, Penn State's defense is good enough to go with anybody, against anybody, and fuck them up. Uh, I really don't see too many flaws in that defense. I mean, they got they got beat down in the running game in the second half of that Michigan game, but Michigan has had, like, the the Joe Moore Offensive Line Award. I think it's Joe Moore. Offensive Line Award for, like, two seasons ongoing. Um, and then Michigan basically, like, made them, like, 
I forget. You have to listen to Richard Johnson on Split Zone Duo. He kind of broke down how it, it works schematically. But it's not as simple as they just, like, ran up and just said HB dive every play. It was a little bit more intricate than that. But you should listen to Richard Johnson's breakdown of, like, what happened in that game. And it's Michigan. Like, Michigan, their offensive talent, even though they haven't played a shit piece of anybody, their offensive talent is still, like, one of the 10 best in, in you know, football. I mean, they got two running backs that are studs. Receivers are studs. Offensive line has been what it's been. KJ McCarthy showed what he was in the playoff game, and he still put up like 450, 450 yards, I think, in that game, something like that, something crazy. Um, I mean, Michigan's Michigan. And I still think they hope it's just about anybody, uh, Penn State, that is. Iowa's defense is obviously Iowa's defense. I mean, it's comparable to Penn State as a unit, although the offense obviously uh, holds it back in statistical production. Um, Maryland is good. Maryland's a very sneaky team that, um, you know, in an off, in an off, I don't know what the, what the hell we're going to say there. In an offensive league, I really think they'd be fucking Maryland. I think they'd be putting on some work. I mean, maybe not 10 wins, you know, going to a NY six bowl, but like that's just a team that like structurally doesn't compete against the conference they're in. They don't have the fucking butt to do it. They don't have the fucking Nicki Minaj, you know. The wagon. They don't have the wagon. They need a wagon. Um, I think that's about it. The, the Big Ten, I'm not going to gas with the Big Ten West like that. Like, when I'm making this presumption, it's kind of top-heavy in nature. The Big Ten West is not amazing. Uh, Nebraska got fucking mauled by Colorado. And I know that's peak Colorado form, but, you know, still it is what it is. Um, is the SEC that deep, though? I'm going, I'm going to a whole lot of different areas. But basically, I say this to say that the Pac-12 is what it is. I feel like the quarter, quarterbacking that conference from the very beginning of the season, even to now, I still would take over any other conference at this moment off the top of my head. Um, and I think Bo Nitz has proved to at least be the uh, one in the best position out of that conference. I'm not going to say he's the best. I don't, in my heart of heart, believe Bo Nitz is like the best in that conference, but I think he's the one that's in the best situation, and I think he's taking advantage of it. And even then, like, if you want to say I think Penance is better, I guess the, like, acquiesce that Penance is in, like, an ideal fucking, like, situation himself. Like, the regression that offense has had uh, in very, you know, consistent moments in the last few weeks. I know they went crazy on USC, but... Like, that regression, Oregon has not had that at any point in the season. Oregon has been fucking the entire season. Their worst performance was relative to the competition. What, like the Texas Tech game where they got 38, I think, in that game? That might be, like, their worst performance relative to who they were playing. I can't think of anybody else that, like, they just stunk it up against. Um, I mean, Oregon's Oregon's a crazy dog, dude. Um, And to close out here, man. Uh, and just thinking about this from our perspective, the Auburn perspective, I'm not going to, like, pretend to speak for every single Auburn fan. I'm, I'm not going to even try that. Um, for me, at least, for the way I perceive Bo Nitz for the three years that he was here, um, I guess you can say three. He missed a couple games. It's funny. Uh, the last game that Bo Nitz played was the last game we were ranked. We have not been ranked since, I believe it was November 14th. 2021, they haven't played in, in fucking two years. That's kind of crazy to think about. Um, I was very like, if I if I put on a spectrum, like one end of the spectrum is kind of like against some of the praise he was getting, and the other end was like, I'm just in love with the great white hope bow fucking nits. Um, I was more in. The middle kind of leaning left a little bit, you know, kind of like uh, I was about to get political for a second. Uh, I was leaning left though in 2019 because I mean I, I think a lot of people were giving Nets gas because it was so long since we had like a homegrown product that was decent, like the quarterback position. Um, actually, I don't know the last time even before. I mean, maybe Sean White, but it was so long, and uh, Nets was a legacy. Nets had the Oregon game. Uh, he had like the, he's a freshman, you know, kind of defense going for him. 
so I got it, but I was I was still like, okay, we got to calm down. And then like people were saying this, like even when Nips was like losing us, some very big games. Um, the 2019 team should have been at least in SEC championship contention way longer than they were. I mean, they had two losses by October. Alabama was undefeated. LSU was un well. Alabama had one loss. LSU was undefeated. So once they lost the LSU game, which I think was after the Florida game, that's two losses. I don't. I that pretty much was it. I mean, that pretty much eliminated them. But that was like the last week of October. So they pretty much were eliminated by November from NCC championship contention. I just don't. I don't see how that happened. That defense was probably the most skilled defense that season. Skilled plus coaching wise, like they might not have had like all the top level talent. But in terms of just, like, we have this top level to do at this position, they had to do at every position, I feel like. Um, they didn't have the edge rusher, but they had the defensive line. They had the linebackers. The cornerbacks were, like, elite. Um, the safeties were not so. But they really they really, they really, were solid. Um, receiving talent was really good. Quarter, uh, offensive line talent was... Solid. It wasn't bad. Like it became bad after that, but I think it was a solid offensive line. Um, receivers were good. Seth, um, Schwartz, McLean, Shanker, pretty decent receiving core. Um, it's just the quarterback and the running backs were not like top tier. Whitlow, Booby, Booby was a good running back up until the injuries kind of compounded. He still did all right, but he just wasn't like, like we've had Tank, Jarquez, even uh, Demari Alston, like dudes that I think are like top level talents. Uh, Booby wasn't that, but he was a very hard worker. I, I like Booby. Uh, I like Booby. Uh, but Bo Nitz, um, he was like probably like middle of the conference, and they need him to be a little bit better than that, and they really have like pushed forward, and he wasn't. Um, 2020, 2021, I actually ended up, like, as time progressed, I ended up, like, playing more defense for Nits because a lot of Auburn fans were, like, oh, my God, we've, we've, uh, we're fucking bad now. Like, sometimes that's how it goes with college football. You just wake up one day and you're just, like, not good anymore. And uh, that's what 2021, by the beginning of 2021, that's, like, a real realization point that, like, Auburn, like, is not up there anymore. Like, they still had blue chip talent to a certain degree, but a lot left with Gus, and a lot more left after Harson like, pushed him out. And I think there's just a realization point at some point in 2021, you know, maybe part way in, where it's just like, okay, uh, we're not those dudes anymore. <laughs> we're not those guys anymore. And by 2022, I think it was just like an acceptance, like, okay, we... We we're bad. Like we're not we're not good. We're we're bad. Like we're we're, we're really that Penn State game in twenty twenty two and Auburn, I think opened up a lot of eyes. Like they got domesticated in that second half of that game. And I think that just kinda like womp 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 the whole like kind of experience for Auburn fans. But a lot of people like went back to Knicks in twenty twenty one was like, Well, this team should be better than this. And I think Nitz was the constant, like the, okay, this is the dude that's underperformed the longest. Why is he still here? I think people thought that Harson was like such a QB evaluator that like Finley, he pan picked Finley, who was like decent at some LSU games and bad at some other LSU games. Like, but he's massive. He has the arm strength. Uh, Harson's more of a pocket guy. If if we can just get Finley in there, we'll be all right. And then Philly had the comeback game against Georgia State, and that really, like, shattered kind of the evaluation uh, from being fair and unbiased. But I think I played more defense for Nitz anything in those latter two seasons because it was just, like, it was clear, like, this team was, like, was piss poor. No matter what the reason was, by 2021, this team was, like, finished. Um, Nitz was playing behind a shitty offensive line. Running backs couldn't really get off. Uh, receivers are still solid, but not anywhere near even 2019 level. And the defense was doing the best it could out there, honestly. It just, it just like, if you were just semi-intelligent about football, you knew this wasn't a problem. And unfortunately, a lot of people were not. 
uh, you know, I don't want to relitigate some of the shit that I've seen about and it's, I'm just talking about, I don't care what it was talking about, like, on blogs or whatever. Shit that was said or posted in a radius in Auburn that Nitz would be aware of. Nitz and Izzy Smoke, which is still one of the best names of all time. Izzy Smoke. Um, shit that would have got back to them fairly easy. I mean... <laughs> I, people like will go on these fucking tangents about, oh my god, uh, the, the Twitter and the, the blogs, that shouldn't have offended Nitz that bad or just passionate fans. Dude, people were just like saying on like public forums that like were massive apps at that point in time that they would like blow Izzy Smoke's back out. People were saying that shit. I seen it on Yik Yak, man. That shit was out there, dude. And like Yik Yak, I, I remember even seeing a post from another, I think it was another cheerleader that knew of Izzy Smoke was like, hey, she can see this shit. The same way you guys can, like, see it, she can see it, too. I'm assuming that means that she did see some of those posts. Like, can you guys chill out? And uh, it might not actually be a cheerleader, but, like, the point being, like, d- shit was being said in very loud forms. Uh, Old Row Auburn War Eagle, or Old Row Auburn, that, like, I think just about every white person that attended Auburn like, is, like, mandated to follow on Instagram. Crazy ass comments in those uh, comment sections about Nitz and his wife. I mean, just nutty ass shit that like niggas were saying constantly. Um, and I don't say it to say that Arp is a bad fan base. It's just a fact. I just get pissed people like pretend like that shit didn't happen. It did. It did. It, did. it very much so did. If you were on that campus in 2021, um, it was it was OD. And I'm not. It really doesn't affect me either way. I, I don't. I don't care about it actually happening, honestly. But like the logical inconsistency of it. Like, no, we're just very passionate. Are you? Are you that passionate? Say so you want to like smash his wife? Yeah, is that how passionate you are? Anyway, um, close out here, dude. I think it's gonna be very, very, very weird in my heart of hearts to see Bo Nitz win a Heisman, which I think. I do think that uh, even though Landing to me is a fucking moron in those Washington games for two years running now, um, they're just they're in such a better position right now than Washington. I mean, the way they're playing right now, the just the strength that they're displaying, um, the power, I mean, all that, those superlatives. Uh, I, I I can't see how they lose to Washington unless like somebody gets hurt or something to that effect. I can't see the way they lose it. And like I said, I mean, I think they win that. They went out, you know, they got to be Oregon State, who, not for nothing, watch, you know, Oregon State is a problem. Um, we'll see how Oregon State looks like against Washington. I will say one thing. I do think Washington needs to be undefeated, too, for Nick. So, like, in concrete winning if he wins that game. I think if, like, Washington loses, Penis, like, just, like, sucks air, just looks terrible out there against Oregon State this week. I don't know, dude. I don't. I think they play Oregon State this week. I don't know, really, at that point, dude. At that point, I'm like, because the, the, what makes it impressive is that he's like beating out the dude. Like he's beating up the guy. You know, to beat the man, you got to beat the man. You know, um, and that's where he's pretty much would be doing. You know, being the odds-on favorite for many, many weeks. Uh, yeah, Washington. Yeah. I think they need each other. I mean, I don't know. I don't think Washington needs Oregon to be undefeated, honestly. I think Penis just needs to have like a big-ass game on a big-ass spectacle like that. But I think Nitz might need Washington to be undefeated. I really do think that. I think they need to be as big time as possible. That's what I feel like. I mean, but I, I still don't know who else you like. I guess if he, like, let's say Nitz, like, beats, like, a, a 20th-ranked Washington instead of, like, a 5th-ranked Washington. I guess if Michigan had won out and J.J. went crazy on Ohio State and whoever they play, presumably uh, Iowa in the conference championship, then maybe, but that's a big maybe, dude. Anyway, that's about it. I, I think as an Auburn fan, I think all Auburn fans should be happy for Nitz. Um, I mean, he's an Auburn dude. He's going to be claiming Auburn when he graduates uh, Oregon in five more years or ten more years. When he becomes you know, Patrick Nitz's age, He's probably going to be somewhere located in Alabama, holding it down like his dad did. And we need, you know, the same way we need Pat Nitz to be all right with us right now. We probably need Bo Nitz for recruiting purposes to be all right with us. So, uh, you know, Auburn fans, keep it chill. Just 
just congratulate the man if he wins the Heisman. And uh, understand, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, you're bringing the Heisman back to the state of Alabama. Um, he's always going to be Auburn and Oregon quarterback Bo Nitz, even though you know, those first three years with the way they went. But, um, yeah, shout out Bo Nitz. Uh, shout out Oregon. Fuck Dan Lanning. Um, and I hope you guys, I hope, they, I hope they win a championship, man. If I, if I had to have anybody win a championship, dude, oh, I want Oregon versus Georgia. I need Oregon. I need Nitz to beat Georgia, dude. He's 0 for 4 right now. I've been talking that fifth matchup f- since the f- fourth one happened. I need to see Nitz be Oregon, man, or Georgia, man. I need to see that. I think Nitz can do it if, if they match up. I like Nitz over Beck. I like their skill position talent for the most part of Georgia's. Although Georgia's dudes, obviously, steroids and shit. That, that, even the backup dude, Oscar Delt, or whatever the fuck his name is, that dude was built like a fucking tank, dude. They got two Titans that are crazy. We're going to see what it's about, man. I need I need to see that last matchup, but I need to see Nets against Georgia one more time. I just need to see it, man. I need to see it in the natty. I need to see fucking Bo Nets against the fucking Phantom in his closet one more time, dude, in the natty. I would either take that or Michigan, Ohio State, but I think I want Georgia, uh, Oregon one more time, dude. <sighs> fucking Bo Nets. All right.